Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story about what I think is uh, <clears throat> has to do with the archetype of of creativity. It's about the uh, the Welsh bard Taliesin, who was who was both legendary and under historical figure. And bards are something that I. Uh, connect with the British Isles, with Wales and uh, Ireland and Scotland and the uh, Celts, I think. But when I thought about bards, there are bards all over the world in history. And I thought of names like Moses, Buddha, and Merlin, also from Britain, and uh, Odin, from the Norse mythology, who was a god, actually, but also had bard qualities. But this is about the birth of Taliesin, the Welsh bard. The sorceress Seredwin was much grieved about her, the ugly looks of her ill-favored son, Mordred. And to make amends for that, she decided to make him into a famous bard by the means of a magical potion. So she ordered a large cauldron to be put on the fire, filled with water, and it was to boil for the space of a whole year and one day. And Seredwin herself went out into the meadows and she collected rare herbs and she put that into the brew with many magical incantations. In her house she had a servant boy. His name was Graham. And she ordered him that he should look after that brew when she couldn't do it herself. And she told him that it was a very important task and he had to guard it properly because it was very precious. And it was only the first drop of that brew that would instill the power and the wisdom and the knowledge of the bard. And when the year was up, Seraphine went out once more to collect one more herb. And she ordered Graham to, to guard the pot. And she told him that it was the last day of the year and she had, he had to do it really, really well and guard it with his life or else. And Graham set to work, and he stoked the fire, and he stirred that brew, and he stirred it, and he stirred it, and he stirred it, and it bubbled, and it hissed, and it bubbled, and it hissed, and it bubbled, and it hissed, and suddenly a drop spurted out and landed on his thumb. <laughs> Ow! Hot! But then he felt the change. <laughs> he wasn't a stupid, daft, little, simple servant boy anymore. He knew all the wisdom and all the secrets of the whole world. Because when that drop landed in his mouth, all the power, all the knowledge, all the wisdom of all the ancient bards descended upon him. But with those new gained powers that he got there, he also realized that the sorcerer Seredwin would know about it and she would come after him to seek revenge because he had thwarted her plans to make her ugly son Mordred a bard. So he had to flee from her house and he ran away and he ran as fast as he could with those little legs, as fast as they could carry him. But Seredwin soon found out and she was after him and as fast as he ran, she ran faster. But with the new gained powers of Gweon, he shifted his shape and became a hare. But Seredwin became a greyhound. And as fast as he ran, she ran faster. And when he got to the river, he jumped into the river and changed himself into a fish. But Seredwin changed herself into an otter. And as fast as he swam, she swam faster. He jumped out of the river and became a bird. But Seredwin became a hawk. And as fast as he flew, she flew faster. And he changed his shape and he changed his shape again and again and again. But she followed him again and again and again. In the end, he came and exhausted into a farmyard. And there he saw a large, very pale pile of wheat grain. And immediately, Graham changed himself into a grain of wheat. And he hid himself in that pile. But Seraphine was after him. And she changed herself into a speckled hen. And with sharp, keen eyes, she looked at those wheat grains. And she picked at them and threw them aside, and picked and threw them aside, and picked and threw them aside, until she found the right one. And she picked at it, and she picked at it, and she picked at it, and she swallowed it. 
And that could have been the end of Graham. But it wasn't. Because it didn't take long before Sarah Graham found that she was pregnant. <laughs> and as she knew that she hadn't lain with a man, she understood that what she carried under her bosom was none other than Graham. But she told her son, her ugly son, Mordred, about it, and the two of them decided that they would kill the baby when it was born. But when the time was up for Sardwin and she gave birth to a baby boy and she held it in her hands and she saw how radiantly beautiful that little baby was, she just could not bring herself to kill it. So to save it from the envious Mordred, she put it into a leather bag and she tied it tight at the top and she put it on the ocean and let it drift across the sea. But a few days later, the young Lord Elfin was out fishing for salmon, and he cast his net out into the sea, and he pulled them in. But today there was no salmon in the nets, which was very unusual, because in those days there were masses of salmon around the coast of Wales and Ireland and Britain. And he cast it out again and pulled it in. No fish. And again and pulled it, and pulled it in. But no fish. But now it was heavy. And when it came to the end, there was a leather bag. And he opened the leather bag, and to his great surprise, in it was a little baby boy. And without knowing what he said, he called out, Taliesin! And that means radiant brow in the old Welsh tongue. And to his even greater surprise, that little baby started to talk. Yes, Taliesin is my name. For Elfin, do not lament the lack of salmon today because no catch was ever as good as today. And though I'm small, I'm skillful. And there are wonders on my tongue. And I can help you and give you advice whenever you need it. What? A baby that can talk, thought Lord Elfin. But Taliesin already abroad continued. Once upon a time I was a handsome youth. And I was tutored in the halls of Saradwin. And though I was small in stature, I was great in her or sacred halls. But she held me a prisoner. But inspiration set me free. Learned I grew in ancient art and in the speech before words. But for the wisdom I gained, I had to flee from her hall, from the anger of Saradwin, from her terrible call of revenge. And since then, I have fled and shifted my shape. I've been a hare and a frog in a pond. I've been the shape of a crow. And high with the roebucks, I have leapt over thickets, barring my way. I've been a raven of prophetic speech, and a cunning fox, and a short swift, and a squirrel hiding in vain. I've been the red deer. And I have been hot iron hammered in fire. I've been the keen edge of the sword and the cry in the midst of the battle. And I've been a struggling bull and the bristling boar caught in a ravine. I was a grain of wheat and was eaten and was born again. And put in a bag, I floated across the sea. I know that I have come to light again. And Lord Elfin was speechless as he held that little baby. How can such a little baby talk? But such a baby has to be looked after. I have to take it home with me. And he brought that baby home to his house and he nursed it and he looked after, looked after it and it grew up in his house. And whilst Taliesin had grown into adulthood, he became the most famous of Welsh bards, a master druid. And he advised his lord Elfin with all his life and he helped him out of many difficult situations. And he brought wealth and prosperity to his household. Taliesin, the Welsh bard. 